Hey guys, welcome back to Voice in the Wilderness. My name is uh, Dylan, and there's light behind me, so that's a good sign. Uh, guys, today's video is going to go up a little bit, just a smidge, a scotch, if you will, later than usual. There has been so much happening in the world, and we've been so faithful to bringing it back to Scripture and comparing the two that uh, it's been like 3 o'clock nights for me in the morning lately, and so I had to sleep in just a little bit, just a little. Um, so guys, I just want to uh, open with, again, and so many of you are so good about this, guys, but we are having some people creep in here just to stir division, um, and I just want to remind us, guys, that agape in everything, love each other in everything, we have liberty in, um, in things that we don't agree with, that's okay, you're welcome to your own opinion, guys. We have unity in the essentials of salvation, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He came to fulfill the, the payment for our sin debt. Um, the Holy Spirit is within the believer, guys. Uh, essentials, you know, we have unity. Um, but guys, if, if you're coming on this page and you're calling people false teachers or heretics or um, you're degrading them or being rude to them, then guys, I would direct you to John 17. And um, I would challenge you guys that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then you'll adhere to that, right? That we're to be in each other as Christ is in the Father, guys. We're supposed to be unified. Uh, and unity and love, frankly, they don't throw bricks at people. Uh, they have calm discussions about differing ideas, and that's okay. We can do that. You can disagree with me. You can disagree um, with a brother or sister, guys, and keep it level-headed and respectful. But guys, the moment that someone starts to berate or get belligerent or, um, you know, I've been called a heretic like two dozen times in the last week, or um, I've been told I don't have any understanding of scripture, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, you know, it doesn't hurt my feelings, but y'all, the time and the hour are very short. And, um, you know, I have always gone back to the word when we speak. And, you know, with that, if you don't have a problem with me and I'm going to the word, then your problem is with the word. Uh, and that's between you and Jesus, man. But guys, I just want to let everyone know just for some housekeeping that the hour is very short. It's very late. And, um, we're just not going to do that on this channel. Uh, that being said, guys, I am looking because we've had so much growth in the last week. Um, I'm looking for at least one or two moderators. If anyone can help me out. Um, I have been staying up late trying to filter all this stuff out and uh, it gets hard. So if you guys know of anyone, uh, or you are someone who would be interested in that, let me know. Um, you can contact me on the comments page, and we'll find a way to talk privately. Uh, and guys, this is a uh, this is a pre-trib ministry. Uh, I believe firmly that's what the Bible says. I've shown you know in past videos why I believe so strongly what I believe, um, and that's just it. So you know we can't do the thing, guys, where um, we were just going to berate one another, uh, where we're going to act belligerent when we disagree. And so if, uh, you know, we want to make sure, guys, that whoever is able to step up and fulfill that role, to come alongside, um, that we are of one accord, uh, that we're a cord of three not easily broken with uh, myself, whoever decides to try to step up and join this uh, ministry, and um, the Holy Spirit. And with that means, guys, uh, please no fake outs. You know, there are so many people, guys, and I've seen it already on this channel, and I've had to remove stuff off of the page, where people will say, hey, let me get your email. I have resources for you. And then they email me a six-page long essay about why I'm a heretic. So we're not going to do that, obviously. Um, and, you know, with that, guys, just be praying for that. Pray for myself and my family, for the ministry, guys. Uh, also, there have been so many people who have been putting names of loved ones in comments. Please continue to do that. Every time I see one of those comments, guys, I don't care what I'm doing. I stop what I'm doing. I got some at work yesterday. I stopped what I was doing. I went to um, I went to a quiet place and I prayed for your family members. So, guys, that's a blessing for me to do. I enjoy being able to do that. Please uh, continue to do that. Because, guys, uh, the hour's late, but Jesus is still on the throne. He is still able to move hearts and spirits. And we're going to keep praying for these people until we're out of here. And then we're going to try to leave some letters or some notes, um, some good resources, guys, for you to pass along to your family members who might be left behind or to hide strategically around your house. 
because guys, the hour is very late. Uh, I have a letter personally that I've uh, I've written um, that needs a little bit of rewriting, rewriting as I've uh, you know gotten a better understanding of Scripture and um, you know some minor modifications. My letter talks about where we're going to be. It dispels the UFO nonsense, and then it describes the judgments in detail. And it is scripture. I mean, guys, this letter is long. It's like, I think it's like 12 or 13 pages. But most of that is because I've written down scripture, and I'm walking through the scripture verse by verse. Uh, guys, so with that, um, let's talk today a little bit about CBDCs and this timeline Um because I know that yesterday my audio was terrible, guys. I had a brother donate a mic, which is why it sounds so much better today. Um, and with that, guys, so my brother who was able to donate the mic also gave me a really helpful chart that he created. Um, and this talks about the timeline here, kind of from the flood and on the similarities between like the days of Noah and what we're looking at now. Um, so guys, real quick, let's, um, let's look at this, okay? So, um, the CBDCs, uh, guys, these are centralized bank digital currencies, okay? These are programmable money. Um, they're saying now, the World Economic Forum is saying now that they want you to get an implant, which is Revelation 13, right? I mean, we're looking right at that. Now, am I saying that whatever first iteration is going to be the mark of the beast? No. What I am saying, though, is that it's compelling that in... All of the convergence that we see right now, where we've got uh, Israel's about to go to war, we have this SDG summit where it's a covenant being reconfirmed with many for seven years. Um, we have this BRICS meeting in August, which could or could not be, right? I have this cool saying, it could be either or neither, right? Could or could not be um, the uh, rise of the Ten Kings. There's five now. They're launching their currency, and there's going to be five more potentially joining them, which it could have been any other number, guys. But the fact that it's five more joining them is also something just at least, at least to stop and ponder. Again, I'm not saying this is the Ten Kings, but I am saying that with all the stuff going on, it's kind of, it's kind of enough to stop and go, hmm. Um, now, it could, it could very well be that instead of BRICS being the Ten Kings, Right, that the UN has already kind of uh, divvied the world up into ten economic zones, and the UN has also been tooting the horn this week about wanting to uh, basically take over globally in the event of the next emergency. Which, guys, again, all of this stuff is screaming the world of Antichrist, the system of Antichrist, right? Um, and I want to just say too, I mean, this is just from a logical perspective. This is just kind of how my brain works. We're getting to know each other more. Um, and hopefully by now you guys know that, again, I'm, I have a fidelity to the word, right? So what does the word uh, tell us about the kingdom of Antichrist, right? Uh, that it's going to trample anything underfoot, that it is, um, you know, it's, it's basically, we go back to Revelation 13, and let me, uh, let me open my Bible there real quick, guys, because I just want to talk about it. I just want to talk about it, because, guys, all of this stuff that's happening, you know, how much more do we need, right? Uh, just logically, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, guys. But when we look at all the stuff that's happening, right, and we see all of these boxes being checked, like never before in human history, I might add. Now, I'm a young guy. Uh, my father in Christ is, you know, late 60s. And I asked him, I was like, hey, man, like, how long have you been waiting for the Lord to come back? And he said, really, like, since the 70s. And I said, cool, well, you know, have you ever seen it like this? And he said, no, never. He talked about, like with Pastor Chuck Smith, who I love, uh, and he's in the glory of Jesus right now. There was a time there where Pastor Chuck was really thinking that it could be the European market, but it didn't quite fit. Uh, it wasn't global. It was regional. It was this whole thing. Uh, but I asked my, my, my mentor, right, my brother, my uh, spiritual dad, if you will. I said, hey, man, like when you look at like now, and he's like, oh, it's night and day. You know, basically, we've never seen the amount of convergence. We've never seen it so close. We've never seen, because he told me that before, he would think about it and he would say, uh, you know, there would have to be a really large gap between the rapture and the tribulation to start if it took place then. Guys, I want to say a couple of things, okay? Um, the technology for the tribulation is here. Um, we're looking at this boom in AI. We're looking at... Um, 
we're looking at these CBDC chips that they're trying to implant, guys that they're talking about not thinking about as a currency, but thinking about as a permit to use the currency, right? Um, which is exactly right. You can't buy or sell without the mark, right? And so um, let me see real quick. I want to I wanna pull up this. Um, here we go, right here. Starting in 14, this is talking about the false prophet and his relationship with the beast, what he's going to do during the tribulation. So Revelation 13, starting at 14, and he says, And he deceives those who dwell on the earth, those who, oh, I'm sorry, by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, and the beast is the Antichrist, uh, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wo wounded by the sword and lived. So guys, preceding this just for context, um, scripture indicates that the beast, the Antichrist, uh, possibly will either have some type of mortal wound that he resurrects from, because we know that Satan is the author of the counterfeit, um, or it could be that it just appears to be like that, and then it stays, and then he um, and then he comes back. Either way, guys, Satan is a con man. He's a ripoff artist, so he's gonna try to have he's gonna have to deify the beast, or try to. And in order to do that, he's gonna have to have these false signs and lying wonders, and part of that is gonna be a pseudo resurrection. I think personally, that's my personal thought. Um, one of my really uh, I really enjoy Tim uh, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins. They have some stuff that. As we look back and we have the benefit of hindsight, doesn't quite line up with scripture, um, but they do have some interesting thoughts on that as well. Um, so with that, going back to the scriptures, in verse 15, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Which is interesting, guys, when you think about what could AI do, right? What could artificial intelligence do? It could definitely be implemented to give this image of the beast a likeness, a personality, the appearance of one, right? It's all smoke and mirrors, guys, but that's the thing. Satan is not God. He's not even God's rival, man. He's a created being, and he's going to lose. We know the end of the book, guys, but when we look at this, we can see very clearly that with the implementation of artificial intelligence, this could very well be what causes the image of the beast to have a likeness, to have um, a personality, whatever. Um to have the appearance of life. It's literally artificial intelligence is just artificial man-made smoke and mirrors life, right? And now for the nitty-gritty of going back to the CBDC for the implant and, and thinking about this, that they're saying they want to think about this, guys, as a permit to use the currency, not as a currency itself. We're looking, guys, and it says this in verse 16. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Six, six. Pardon me. Got a weird little little bubble there. Um, so guys, I mean, this seems, again, we're looking at this, and the theme of this, guys, is that we're looking at all this convergence, and it's checking box after box after box after box. And so what we want to do here, guys, is at least stop and ponder, like, this could be it. With all this stuff happening, uh, you know, we have the SGG Summit that is, I mean, ticks a lot of boxes from Daniel. Uh, we have, uh, we have this, this Mark of the Beast technology in place. We have the technology to give the image of the beast a likeness. Um, with the Abrahamic houses opening several months ago, guys, we have uh, a, sh a skeleton, at least, for this global religion that they're going to have. Um, the UN is talking about being poised to take control as a single entity of the next emergency, guys. We have a one-world government that we're looking at. Um, and again, the control could either, in my mind, as I'm looking at this, it could be BRICS or it could be that the UN just uh, establishes kind of rulers and people to rule these 10 zones. I don't know. Uh, the good news is, guys, is that the believer in Jesus Christ is going to have uh, a box seat. We're going to watch it from heaven. And... Uh, for my mid-trib and post-trib friends that I've made on this channel, guys, and thank you for being civil. You know, I have a little joke is that, you know, we'll talk about it on the way up either way, right? Uh, and guys, I just want to say too, going back to that point when I started, I'm okay for differing opinions as long as they're respectful and as long as they're done in agape. I have a, a, a friend that I've made on this channel, and uh, one of their comments said, that if the timeline doesn't add up for either of us, right, like if, uh, if I'm wrong or if you're wrong, the grace of God will sustain us. And guys, that's the attitude to have. That is so cool. 
So I'm giving this person a shout out because I, I have been bragging about this person to everybody. Because so often, guys, you see so much division and, and animosity. That's the heart of the believer, though, man, is that we can disagree on this stuff, but agape and everything. You know, if it doesn't work out for my timeline, then the grace of God will sustain me. If it doesn't work out for their timeline, the grace of God will sustain them. Really, guys, the grace of God is the breath of an, in our lungs, right? And so, you know, when we're looking at how to deal with uh, differing opinions, guys, do an agape, especially here. This is a ministry for Christ. Um, and I'm trying to buck the trend of the last 2,000 years of hate and division among among professing Christians. Guys, we're a group of believers dedicated, trying to make ourselves closer and closer to a bride ready for her groom, closer to the Church of Philadelphia is always my goal, right? Is um, I don't want there to be any blemish when uh, Christ comes back for us. Now, of course, I'm a sinner, guys, but my point is here is that I want to be all out for Jesus. I'm, I'm having sin. I, I sin, right? I'm a, I'm a fallen human being. God's grace covers me. I repent of it. Uh, but I'm more talking about, like, in my ministry for Jesus Christ, guys, I want to be all out for him, and I want to do it right for him. And I want you guys to engage in that with that mindset of, you know, if you're feeling like you have this temptation, guys, to start wrecking people, know that it's from the enemy. Because Christ is not going to put a spirit of uh, animosity in you. He's not going to put a spirit of hatred in you. It's just not going to happen. Um, so, talking more about uh, convergence, right? Let's look at a, a brief timeline here real quick. Okay, so we had the flood with Noah and his sons and their wives and Noah's wife. After that, you have the rise of Nimrod and you have them trying to make the Tower of Babel a one world uh, government, basically, a one, a one, a global people. Okay, God intervenes and, um, you know, so in the Tower of Babel, he confuses the languages and splits the nations. Okay, we have... Uh, from the time of the patriarch Abraham, you know, we get to uh, captivity in Egypt. From captivity in Egypt, Moses leads people out of the promised land. We know that they go into the promised land, but they don't take all of the promised land, right? Um, they cut deals with these people when they're not supposed to, but God tells them to honor their word. Uh, we see that throughout the course, guys, the whole reason for Daniel 70 weeks is because the people move away from the Lord, right? The book of Judges says, guys, that each man in Israel did what he thought was right in his own eyes. And what that indicates, y'all, is that uh, they weren't walking with the Lord. They weren't seeking him. They were just doing their own thing. A lot like we have now. Okay? Then you've got the prophets who come along and they keep saying throughout the kings and all this stuff, right, that people want a king. They have some good kings. They have a lot, mostly bad kings, right? Israel never has a good king, but Judah has a handful of good kings. Okay? Um... And of course, I mean like post-split with Rehoboam. I don't mean like King David. King David's the guy. I hope I sit next to King David at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Um, but we have this uh, this 69 weeks, right? In between, uh, you know, we have the captivity guys, and we have the 69 weeks of years. So, you know, uh, 483 years, guys, between uh, Nehemiah getting the call to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and the Messiah's first coming. We have the resurrection, guys. We have Jerusalem's destruction in 70 A.D., um, which, again, was not the abomination of desolation, guys. Titus had planned to put a statue of Zeus in there. He couldn't do it. They got greedy. They burned the thing down before he was able, because God is too specific. Israel, there's the great dispersion. But in 1948, they are returned to their land, and they also return to their native language, which the prophet Isaiah prophesied, and Ezekiel 37 also prophesies. So coming down here, you know, we have... Um, the Feast of, of New Wine, uh, which was the day that the Holy Spirit uh, was poured out, right, on Pentecost. Uh, possible, guys, that again, the rapture could be within this time period, right? Uh, I'm personally of the mind, guys, that when Scripture says that we know the season, it's possible, right, that we're looking at a Jewish idiom here, uh, and that we're looking at a literal season. Uh, it could be, right? And again, I'm not saying God whispered in my ear. I'm not I'm not going to blaspheme the true and living God by lying. But what I am saying, guys, is that it's compelling all the stuff we have happening at once. Right? So we have all of this stuff. We have the World Economic Forum. We've got this BRICS. We've got the CBDC. We've got, uh, you know, the Catholic Church calling all of these religions to come together and have one religion. Right? Um, you know, so when we look at what's happening now in September, guys, we have this UN Assembly for the SGGs where they're going to talk about... Um, you know, these 
these globalist agendas. So, you know, uh, President-elect Dennis Francis informed member states that the theme of the General Assembly's 78th session will be rebuilding trust in regaining, glo- reigniting global solidarity. So they want to come together, guys, as one people. Accelerating the action on the 2030 Agenda and Sustainable Development Goals towards peace, prosperity, right, progress, and sustainability for all. So we're looking at down the barrel of them trying to form a one-world government. We have this Daniel 927 idea in this um, this covenant with many being confirmed for a period of seven years. We read that in one of our other videos. Um, we're looking at September 19th, beginning the Jewish Fall Day of Remembrance, which is Feast of Trumpets, which, uh, you know, if the tribulation started then, right, September 19th, if they sign this thing, then seven years later, guys, it would be a fulfillment in that he would call his saints from heaven and from earth to himself, right? So it could be. Now, again, guys, I'm not saying any of this in stone, but I'm saying with all of this stuff going on, and you add that with people scoffing at the of the rapture in general, which I've had that all over the page, guys. Um, evil is running rampant, guys. You know, all of these things converging at once. How much more do we need, Right. Realistically, how much how much more do we need? We have all this stuff happening. We've got all this stuff going on at once, guys. And I, I'm just asking you, and I'm being genuine, how much more do we need for the Lord to reveal to us? And that's not even talking about, you know, extreme weather, earthquakes in various places and diverse places, volcanoes, guys, all this stuff. I mean, that's not even talking about that. So how much more do we need before we really stop and ponder? Maybe the Lord is coming soon. So guys, uh, I'm going to share the gospel in every video, right? And so uh, I'm, I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you to get right with Jesus. Uh, my pastor has a really great uh, saying, and he says that, look, no matter what religion you follow, all paths lead before God, right? Either way, whatever, whatever, whatever hokey thing you follow, man, you're going to be in the presence of a righteous judge. But what matters is what you did with his son, Jesus Christ, and that determines your location. Are you going to heaven or hell? Both real places. Right? So I'm not telling you to get religious. You could read every religious text and it would do you no good, guys. But what I'm telling you to do is get right with Jesus because you and I are born in sin. And even if you think you weren't, man, the first time you had a white lie, the first time you stole a cookie, the, the, the first time you hit your sister with a Tonka truck on the head, whatever it was, guys, that caused us to have no more fellowship with God. God, the Father, loving you so much, brought down His only Son, the man, Jesus Christ, right? God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, lived a perfect life and died for you so that you would have a covering for your sin, guys, but you have to accept it. It's on you, right? And he'll call you to himself, guys, but you're not guaranteed 30 calls, right? So if he's calling you and there's something within you saying, man, I should look into this, do it. Uh, Because if you put it off, you're not guaranteed to have that calling again, guys. And so with that, you know, what we do is we say, you know, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm a sinner. Uh, I trust you as the only covering for my sin. Your grace is sufficient, Lord. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord. Please forgive my iniquity. Jesus, come and be the personal Lord and Savior of my life. And guys, you're saved. And when all of this scary stuff in the tribulation happens, you'll be with us, man. You'll be out of here. Okay? So I love you guys. I, if I don't see you in the air today, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, thanks for your patience, guys, with yesterday's audio. It was kind of rough, I know. Uh, I, I didn't in the moment check the audio. I usually do. Uh, but when I listened back to it, it sounded like I was being sucked through a soda can. So this audio hopefully is much better. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my brother who was able to help me upgrade some equipment. Uh, and I appreciate that. And, um, you know, guys, I love you. I hope to see you soon. Please put your family members' names in here. I want to pray for them, okay? All right. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.